All right, what is going on, you guys? Welcome back to EP09. We are live for the 2024 Arnold Classic South America. We're going to see a showdown today of some of the top names, definitely some of the more popular names in our sport. Welcome, for, welcome, you guys. I'm really glad that you guys are all here. So we'll go through a little bit of a rundown here in a minute. Right now, they've got, uh, they've got another division that's on here. I'm actually not exactly sure uh what division this is to be honest with you guys i just know that the open is coming up here in about uh, 30 minutes or so so that'll give us all the chance to do a little bit of a rundown on exactly what we're going to be seeing when it comes to the show and uh really our top athletes that we can expect in this show as well so you guys let me know what's up in the chat good to see you guys here good to see you guys <laughs> just to give a, a little bit of a rundown we're looking at uh, tony o'burton we're looking at Good Vito, and we're looking at Raphael Brandau. That is your presumed top three in this show. And, you know, all these guys, I gotta say, <clears throat> definitely when it comes to Tony O'Burton, we're gonna be seeing Tony O at his absolute best, I believe. Good Vito? Good Vito's kind of a toss-up, you know? It's, it's tough to say with Good Vito. This is his pro debut. This is a much-anticipated pro debut as well for Good Vito. He really came on the scene in, uh, for some reason my camera doesn't want to pick up my arm, which is kind of weird. <laughs> um, Good Vito turned pro in 2022, and we have not seen him on a pro stage uh, yet, really. So this is quite a lineup to go up against. You know, Tony O'Burton, who just finished 8th at the 2023 Olympia. We had uh, Raphael, who took 10th at the 2022 Olympia in the Open. And then decided to take an entire year off in order to put out size and make improvements, which was the smart move. Ah, turn up my mic. Appreciate it, bro. Okay. How's that? Ladies and gentlemen, how is that for the sound? Should be better. Red Loop, what's up, bro? Uh, this live stream actually was free. It's free on... Uh, my arm keeps disappearing. I don't like it. Um, it's free on uh, on YouTube. Uh, on the Muscle Contest International YouTube page, you can find it free right there. Uh, you guys let me know how I'm sounding now. It should be a little bit better. I turned it up there. Right on. Thanks. Appreciate it, you guys. Appreciate it. So, awesome. Awesome. Mr. Manuel, what's up? What's up? Good to see you back. Good to see you back. I guess the disappearing arm thing is just going to be uh, uh, ongoing for this uh, for this stream. Maybe I just got to grow bigger arms and then they won't disappear. Getting there. Getting there. <laughs> All right. So we should be seeing the men's open come on very shortly here, you guys. Very shortly. And man, for the third Arnold Classic that we've seen in really, what, only six weeks now? The Arnolds have been killing it, man. Absolutely killing it with the content, you know? To have the Arnold Classic Ohio and then the UK only two weeks later, and then to just have this, what was it, two weeks later itself? <laughs> I mean, we're just, we're really getting spoiled at the start of the bodybuilding season. But we've got other shows coming up as well that we will be going live for. You know, the, the Detroit Pro is coming up next weekend. That is looking like a phenomenal lineup. The New York Pro is only, what, six weeks away now. We'll see Tony O'Burton again at that show. Up against Nick Walker, you know, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. But let's concentrate on what we have here for the Arnold Brazil. Some unfortunate news going into this show. Carlos Thomas Jr. Unfortunately had to drop out earlier this week. Apparently he has had a death in the family, a family member. So I offer him my condolences. Very sorry to hear about your loss. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're not going to be able to see him on this stage, especially after what we saw in Texas there in 2023, going up against Hunter Labrada and Andrew Jack. I think that we would have seen Carlos easily in the top three, if not top two, was definitely a possibility. He would have outmuscled everybody on this stage. He absolutely would have outmuscled everybody. Unfortunately, we're just not going to see it. But that's it's very early in the season. So we will see Carlos Thomas Jr. again later this season. I am positive of that. Would have been nice to see him here, but 
uh, for what we're going to be up against. We have some very, very high-profile athletes in this show. I am kind of surprised that we didn't see more guys jump into this show, though, to be honest. Um... It's too bad. I really thought that we would have seen, uh, you know, some more some more bigger names jump into this. But it is going to be uh, it is going to be a good show. Uh, the Red Loop says live stream is decent quality, but guys on the outside are less lit. Lighting is not evenly distributed. Unfortunately, man, that just seems to be an ongoing trend with a lot of these shows. I don't know why they don't completely light the entire city. You can even see it even here from what we're looking at. It absolutely is not lit, you know, evenly from one side of the stage to the other. The center is very well lit, and any of the guys on the outside are not getting a fair chance. That's uh, that's really unfortunate. <clears throat> However, um, what we can say is, in the men's open, we have 10 guys in the lineup. So, I think we can expect maybe some top three, top four call-outs, even if we see, you know, uh, top five and then uh, and then the second call-out is six to ten. I don't think that's so bad when it, when it comes to the lighting. But even what we're seeing here, you know, um, for our guy that's on the, uh, on the outside of the, uh, of the call-out here, well, both of these guys now you'll be able to see, there's definitely a difference, definitely a difference. That's really unfortunate. Uh, Mr. Manuel says, uh, AEP09, out of topic. How, uh, how has, uh, how's been your bodybuilding career injuries? I'm having some trouble with my pec and knees and it's rough on the head. Yeah, listen, I've been training for 20 years straight, bro. I have, I can honestly say that I have consistently trained to one capacity or another for 20 years straight, four or five days a week, for sure. Aside from maybe a week or two off here or there for injuries, I've had, uh, elbow uh, elbow tendonitis um i had a uh, i had a shoulder injury actually back in 2012 where i couldn't do any dumbbell shoulder presses for probably man i don't know 2 3 months you know i've had uh, i've had bicep uh, bicep tweaks the thing it is thing of it is when you have when you have an injury you have to be able to be honest enough with yourself to pull back pull back let it heal. None of this training around it shit. I did that when I was younger. It doesn't work as effectively. Come off of that muscle group. If you do have to train, you know, if it's an upper body injury, go train legs. That's what Charles Griffin did. And now Charles is looking like he's going to be at his absolute best coming into the next uh, bodybuilding season, which is probably going to be 2025. So that's that's my advice for you. Um, thanks for the question, dude. <sighs> Appreciate you putting this on. Glad you're here. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Kevin Fru, what's up, Kevin? It sounds like Fuad is going to uh, address this issue for his show. Good. Good. I think that the Detroit Pro is... Oh, my fucking disappearing arm is really bothering me. <laughs> uh, I think that the Detroit Pro is going to be well put on. I was actually talking to uh, Tony O'Burton about that. Antonio was very strongly considering doing the Detroit Pro. He was actually invited to do it. And very, very strongly considered it simply because of the fact that he knows that this show is going to be very, very well run. They're even offering to pick these guys up and drive them to the venue from the hotel, you know, like you, know, like you used to hear it happen back in the old school days. The money is there. What is it, twenty five grand? So, yeah, I think that the Detroit Pro has very high expectations. I think that it is not getting nearly the coverage that it should. And uh, I don't know if Fuad should be pushing it more or what it could possibly be, but it is going to be a, a, a really good show. Justin Rodriguez is going to be there, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Justin again. He is one of my, one of my personal favorites in, in men's open uh, right now. He has been for the past couple years. You know, from the back, he is very difficult to beat. But, again, um, for the Arnold uh, uh, Sports South America here, we did actually have another uh, dropout as well. Uh, Jonathan uh, was supposed to be in this show, and he ended up dropping out of that. I think he is still doing Detroit, though. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But, um, you know, how would he have done in this lineup? Some say that he would have done well against guys like... Uh, you know, good veto because he's probably going to uh, out-condition him. 
But honestly, I didn't see John De La Rosa anywhere past top four, in my opinion. He's good. He's a veteran of the sport. All the respect in the world. But um, I just think that there's a, a few guys in this lineup that uh, would have either, either beat him on shape or, um, well, really just, yeah, most, mostly on shape, I think. Size-wise, he would have been able to, you know, easily hold his own against guys like Tony O'Burton, um, which is not necessarily fair to say until you really stand, see them standing next to each other, which unfortunately we won't see at this show. But, yeah, we'll... Anyway, John De La Rosa is another one that had to drop out. I get caught up on some comments here. Uh, uh, Red Loop says, Vito's quads look super diced. Do you think the upper body will match? <sighs> That's a tough one with good Vito. Good Vito is untested on a pro stage up to this point. How is he really going to do for his pro debut? Let's look at some of the history of pro debuts in the recent past for guys that looked like they were going to bring it. It actually did. Nick Walker, 2022 New York Pro. He won his pro debut. That is a very, very rare occurrence. But Nick did it. Now, Nick also went on to place fifth at the Olympia in 2022. In my personal opinion, he should have placed fourth ahead of Hunter Labrada, but then came in in 2023 and took third. Or sorry, um, 2023, he, uh, he had to drop out. You guys get the years. <laughs> but yeah, for a guy like Good Vito, he does a lot of filtering of his pictures on Instagram. And that's very, very obvious with Good Vito. We saw it happen with, um, oh God, what is his name again? It's completely escaping me. Uh, I wish it wasn't. Um, we've seen instances of bodybuilders in the past where they will overpromise and under, under deliver based on their Instagram pictures. You know, um, the filtering is just out of hand. Now, don't get me wrong. All bodybuilders put filters on their pictures. You know, they all do. But it has to be within a certain amount of, you know, reasonability when it comes to the amount of filtering that you put on those pictures. Because it can make you look like something that you're just not. It can make you look like you have more depth to uh, muscle separation, especially. Conditioning-wise, like, it can really aid in that to a degree. But really, it comes down to the amount of shading you can put on it and the depth of the uh, of the separation when it comes to the muscle. We'll see if Good Vito actually does have that separation. If he doesn't, then he is going to look, you know, subpar. And that is going to affect him. Do I still think that he's good for top three in this lineup? I do. The quads, I agree, did look fantastic when uh, he posed down with Tony O'Burton at the press conference. However, I am not as optimistic that Good Vito is going to be, well, frankly, as good as what his Instagram pictures are. But we'll see. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, is Good Vito really going to live up to the hype and really hit it on his pro debut? Keep in mind, he is working with Chris Aceto. But to my knowledge, Chris Aceto is not with him in Brazil. Now, Tony O'Burton's coach, Justin Jacoby, actually traveled to Brazil to dial him in within the last week. And that does make a difference. Having your coach actually there does make a difference. Um, CVS Vlogs wins the open show. It should be within the next 15 minutes or so. Um, they had it scheduled for 1 o'clock, and uh, it should be coming up here very soon. Uh, let's get caught up here. Uh, Vito's midsection is going to be washed out, according to Trent Rollins. That's a good possibility. It's a good possibility. And not a lot of people talk about good Vito's midsection. He has great front shots for the most part. His back shots are going to be the catalyst. And that's something that we don't typically see him post. He doesn't post his weakest shots. And not a lot of bodybuilders do. But Good Vito is definitely someone of note that does not make those posts showing if he's made any improvements where he really needed to. And he definitely needed improvement from the back. But there's no hiding on stage. So we are going to see it here soon. Uh... Mr. Manuel 23, I don't like Vito's quads. They look a little weird. I think I know what you mean for the most part. Um, I don't think that good Vito's quads have the uh, roundness, I think, to the outer quad sweep um, when it comes to maybe halfway down the quad to the hip tie-in. It doesn't quite 
flow as much as like Tony O'Burton's uh, quads do, or even Raphael Brandau. With that being said, if they're separated and he has that feathering in the quads, that could make up for that a little bit. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Red Loop says on the Dennis James podcast, John said that him and his coach have decided to shut it down until the end of the season. Well, there you go. There you go. Is that a good move for John De La Rosa at this point in his career? You know, he's like 42 or 43, I think. In my opinion, he's running out of time. And this could be his potentially last season uh, to really be competitive. Um, you know, at the highest level is what we're talking about here. I don't know if that's a good move or not. I would probably go after one more show throughout the season if I was him, um, because he is in shape now. Uh, he could potentially, uh, you know, get into a smaller show with less of a lineup and, and do well and maybe even qualify for the Olympia. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Um, but he's had, a, he's had a good season even so far. You know, he's done well at some big shows and, uh, well, if he thinks that taking the year off to uh, make improvements and then come back is appropriate, then we'll see how he does. Uh, Brent Rollins. Oh, yeah. Nick did not win his pro debut. Um, what did he place? Third or fourth in Chicago or something? I, I don't remember which show it was. Refresh my memory. My apologies. You're right. Uh, but uh, Nick did have, you know, a fantastic start to his uh, to his pro career. You know, the New York Pro and then the Arnold Classic wins, you know, um, fifth at his first Olympia, third at his second Olympia. So Nick has uh, Nick has done very well. Mr. Manuel says, Regan and Horst edit their posts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Regan, though, has proven himself at this point. I do not consider Regan an Instagram bodybuilder. I think he's proven himself enough. I'd love to see him in this lineup, actually. <laughs> Uh, but Regan, Regan Grimes has started prep, and we will see him on a pro stage here probably mid mid to late season. I, actually, if you guys follow uh, the channel here, you know that I do the Canadian Beef podcast on a regular basis with Robin Strain, Morgan McDonald. You know, there's there's a lot of pros that are on there regularly, actually. Nate Spear, uh, Justin Savoie, great, great pros. And Robin actually wants to get Regan on the show. Because, I mean, Regan is Canadian. We got to get the Canadian beef, right? So hopefully we can get that going in the in the near future soon. Great podcast. You guys go check out Canadian Beef Podcast. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Manuel Robin also comes on the Bodybuilding Breakdown with me on a regular basis. Just great dude overall, man. Great dude. And really great bodybuilder. He sent me some of his, uh, some of his updates here at uh, seven weeks out of the New York Pro. He's going to surprise some people again, man. And he comes in shredded. Anyway, Robin, we love you, dude. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, CBS Vlogs. I, I, I got your back, dude. I got your back. Uh, Mr. Manuel23. Uh, he, had dimps, he had some dents similar to Rami's. Oh, Vito. Some dents in the quads. Now, that is, uh, that's something that we'll keep an eye on. We'll keep an eye on that. Go Fitness. Go Fitness in the host, ladies and gentlemen. Krishan from Goat Fitness. What's going on, Krishan? I still got to get you on the bodybuilding breakdown. Actually, full full transparency, I messaged I messaged Krishan and he actually got back to me. He said, "Yeah, let's do it." And I've just been flat out, boys, with uh, with my diving company. Like I did six dives this week. It was like t over ten hours I spent in the water. Anyway, that's why I haven't really gotten any regular posts up. But uh, I've got another diver I'm hiring. I had to fire a guy last week. Anyway. Yeah, the, the, the regular content's coming back. You can expect to see Krishan on the channel here in the very near future. Krishan will get you on. Um, go fitness in the host. Uh, okay. Uh, Justin Bass, you think this year Nick can be top three? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think Nick can definitely be top three. I think that Nick Walker has the potential, now keep that in mind, the potential to actually win the Mr. Olympia someday. Now, in order for that to actually happen, I think that certain guys do have to come in, maybe not necessarily at their best, but Nick is, I think Nick is improved. I think that Nick is going to be better than we've seen him in previous years, and I, I do think that he has the potential to be Mr. Olympia. 
especially if Derek doesn't improve, because I have not been impressed by Derek Lowe's Ridley lately. The 2023 Olympia, I wasn't impressed by. Some of that was lighting, some of it was the lighting, but Derek has to get substantially better if he wants to retain that title, especially after what we just saw from Hottie Chupin in the last two shows. Derek's really got to step it up, but he's up to the challenge. Uh, let's see, uh... Red Loop says, John says all the judges are telling him he need more size. I might I might even take the rest of the year off by the sounds of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that John De La Rosa could use some more size, but I mean he's not a small guy either. You know, he's not he's not a small guy by any stretch. So that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh let's see. Uh Justin says I agree that Fitzwater is the favorite for Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. I think Martin Fitzwater, you know, he's sitting around 240 pounds right now. He is looking to be at his best as well. And Detroit is, it's just a show that I feel fits him as a competitor, you know, really well. I think that he's got a good shot at winning it. Uh, Go Fitness. Yeah, I just went on about it. And you actually left me a comment, of course. Uh, uh, Go Fitness says, people are too harsh on horse. He looked great at Romania. I agree that he did look great at Romania. He definitely, definitely brought it. I mean, to stand next to Samson Dauda and Beirut Tabani and be able to hold your own from the front and from the side, he did. He looked great. I think that he got his credit when it came to that show. Um, people were harsh on him when it came to the Arnold Classic look that he brought, and rightfully so, because he did not look good at that show. Whatever happened, you know, he is a new pro, so they're probably still trying things. But yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't the horse MD that we were all expecting. Is he going to come back better? Absolutely. Is he a future Olympian? Yes, he is. Uh, let's see. Uh, John is not. Oh, Goku Luffy says John is not taking a year off. Just a little time to make improvements. Uh, the judges told him to do, and then he's going to do a show later. Qualify for the Olympia. That's what I think. I think he should. I think that's what he should do. I don't think that he should take a year off just based on how he's done so far. And like I said, the fact of the matter is he's not getting any younger. True of us all. <laughs> uh, Mr. Manuel says, uh, Goat Fitness, you're awesome. Gotta love, gotta love Goat Fitness, man. Everybody go subscribe to Goat Fitness. Uh, Davey Addict, uh, these guys aren't looking super impressive, kind of just bland looking. Also, let's go Tonio. Yeah, let's go Tonio for sure. I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him. Um, yeah, I don't know, uh, I don't know exactly what this division, uh, 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 well, classic, but, um, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not sure, uh, if this is an amateur, I'm assuming that it is for amateur, you know, not bad. But uh, they should be getting into the men's open here soon. Uh, I was actually talking to Tonio, and he said that the uh, pre-judging is going to be at 1 o'clock. So that'll be coming up. Uh, James Mack says, Walker is my favorite bodybuilder, but he needs to get his legs up to par with his upper body. That is definitely something that Nick has needed to work on. Nick needs more size to match his insanely big upper body. There's no question. Has his legs grown over the last year? I think they have. But I think that Nick's upper body has also grown, whether, you know, he likes it or not, honestly. Um, he does need more leg size. That's what it comes down to. No question. Uh, Davey Addict, uh, Nick could be top two, actually. I think he's going to give Derek a run for his money uh, for second, Hottie in first. That's where I see this going this year as well. I, I think that's where it's going to go. I actually think that Nick can beat Samson. Um, I think Nick should have beaten Samson, in my opinion, mind you, at the 2022 Arnold Classic. Or was it 2020? Yeah, 2022 Arnold Classic. I think he should have beaten Samson there. But that's me. Um, <clears throat> oh, Davey Attic. I, I know I was shooting messages with you back and forth on Instagram, bro. Um, Got busy. Uh, sorry I didn't get back to you. Um, it's a busy life, dude, for sure. Uh, Peter says, agreed about Lunsford. Yeah, he's got to step it up. Uh, James Mack says, I have Lunsford in third this year. I could see it. I could see it. If Derek Lunsford does not bring the improvements to the stage at the 2024 Olympia, mark my words, he will not retain his title. He cannot show up at the 2024 Olympia in the same shape that he brought 
to the 2023 Olympia. No question. Now, from the back, yeah, he's going to win those shots. But that's only two shots. He's good from the side. But Hottie's better from the side. You know, so is Nick, frankly. So he's got to gotta bring that muscle density, man. He needs those striations. He really, and, and he does need more overall size, too. I think the legs were a bit slight. I think that uh, the arms from the front are good, but need to be better. Yeah, that's that's where Derek Lunsford is for me. Uh, let's see. Is Paul Leozan judging in Detroit? You know what? I don't know, but I hope not. I, I hope not, just because I think that there could be a perception there of, uh, you know, bias. Um, not that any of, like, it's not like Saps is competing or anything like that. But um, I just think it would be more proper for Paul to stay on the promotion side of things for the show and uh, not necessarily judge. Do I think he would be impartial? I, I do. I, I think uh, I think he will be impartial. Um, he seems like a stand-up guy like that. But just to remove the perception, I think, might be in his best interest to, uh, you know, stay on the promotion side of things. And he'd probably enjoy it more, too. Uh... James Max says, going to the Detroit Pro, I have to see it. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Uh, I'm planning on going to the Toronto Pro, actually, in uh, in June coming up. Uh, let's see. Ruben Improved says, something seems off with Fitzwater this year. Can't quite put my finger on it. He looks improved to me. Uh, he does look improved. I think Martin is going to have a fantastic showing, and I think he has a legit shot at winning that show. Um I'll have to take a closer look. Maybe I'll do a feature on him this week coming up and uh, give you guys my full breakdown on what I think of Martin Fitzwater. Uh, Davey Attic says, I don't like Martin's structure and shape, but he does bring great conditioning. I think he's got good shape to the legs, and I think that uh, midsection is probably tighter than what a lot of people think it is, um, especially the conditioning that he does bring, like you said. Yeah, fantastic, right? And that does count for a lot. If he brings the size factor and he has that balance from top to bottom, He'll do well. Like I said, I think he's got a shot at winning. Uh, Justin says, after seeing Nick Walker's uh, recent YouTube videos, it looks like his waist has gotten a lot bigger. That's something that Nick has really had to concentrate on, and he's continued to concentrate on through the entirety of his pro career to date. The big thing with Nick is that when he gets on stage, he has impeccable midsection control. And that is why Nick does very well. If Nick did not have that midsection control, then yeah, I mean, off stage you can see it. I mean, you know, take out the old bubble gut, uh, you know, bonanza with uh, Louis Marco terminology. That's Nick if he's not on a bodybuilding stage. But what counts is what we see on stage, and he does have that midsection control. We'll see the next time he takes the stage, which is only about six weeks. Okay, they're uh, they're doing something here. They're doing something. We might actually get to uh, get into uh, the men's open here, you guys. <clears throat> yeah, might get into it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Trent Rollins says, fake news. He shouldn't have beat Stamps against any Nick at the 2022 uh, Arnold Classic. Well, we did a uh, Superset Man challenge. You guys can go follow Superset Man on YouTube as well. Myself, Marks Max Muscle, um, I believe uh, Bodybuilding News Network did. Krishan, I think you might have did it. Anyway, I can't remember exactly, but we went pose for pose, and all of us had Nick winning. So take that for what it is. Uh, Krishan, uh, Go Fitness. Derek has a year off with Hani Rambod. Uh, he will improve. I agree he will. Will he improve enough? We'll see. When it's the Open, Open might be now. <laughs> it, might be, it might be here. Uh, Derek won only because of politics. I think Derek won. You know what? I honestly don't know why Derek won. I had Derek winning going into the uh, 2023 Olympia. Um, I don't know if Hadi was not necessarily as good as he could have been. I I don't know if it was politics, though, to, to answer your comment directly. I'm not really sure if it was politics. Uh, I guess, what politics would you be referring to <clears throat> would be a good question. Just that he would be a better ambassador as compared to Hadi, you know, the American factor. I I don't know. Um, 
Trent Rollins says Nick Walker, Samson, Dowd, of Big Rami, 2023, Arnold. Um, I don't necessarily disagree. Uh, Rami did look good at that show. He definitely looked improved. We'll see if we see him this year in uh, 2024. Rami has not officially retired. Keep that in mind, you guys. Uh, let's see. Mr. Manuel, I don't know that Nick's quads aren't the best, but apart from that, he wins every uh, he wins every pose that isn't front double or front lat spread. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why Nick does as well as he does. Um, if he improves on those poses, which he has been working on his front lat spread, you know, he'll continue to move up. Absolutely, he will. Uh, let's see. Mark Doolin says, bit quiet. You guys let me know if my mic's too quiet. I can, uh, I can adjust it here. I'll, uh, I'll bring it up a little bit. Um, if it sounds good, let me know. If it doesn't, let me know. I'll bring it up. I'll try bringing it up a little bit anyway. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Davey Addict, I think Nick can bring up his quad sweep uh, slightly. He's top two. If, if, if he can bring it up, yeah, yeah. Uh, his abs are so separated, and his back and arms, awesome, fantastic. Yeah, those are those are the strengths of of Nick Walker, no question, no question. We'll see if he can bring those legs up. <sighs> All right, uh, you guys, I think that we're getting very close to the uh, to the men's open here. I think we're getting very close. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see exactly uh, who's going to be coming on stage first. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is get my sound on the go here. Um, yeah, like I said, I was speaking with Tonio, and uh, Tonio told me that prejudging is at one o'clock. Now the finals are actually going to be at seven o'clock tonight. You guys, make sure to join me for that too. I'll make sure that I'll be live for that as well. And we'll have lots to talk about at that point. We will have lots to talk about. I'm really, really not exactly sure how this show is going to go. I know that Tonio is going to be at his best. Good Vito is still a wild card as far as I'm concerned. And Raphael Brandel, I'm not very confident that he's going to be bringing his best based on some of the updates that I've been seeing. I, I really don't know. I think that he looked better going into the uh, the Arnold Classic uh, Ohio. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. You guys, let me know what you think. You guys let me know your top three in the comments. We're going to be getting into it here soon, you guys. Uh, we got a lot of comments about, uh, about Derek and, uh, and Nick going into the uh, Olympia which is great. I, I love having that conversation. Um, what else do we got? Let's see. Uh, Davey Addict, I'm excited to see a uh, good veto here. Front, uh, the, the front, he looked good. And if he nails his conditioning, brought up his back, he is dangerous. Sure he is. Yeah. We'll see if he lives up to the hype. Uh, Trent Rollins, uh, live streaming or video doesn't do uh, dark skin bodybuilding justice. That's why people get shocked from uh, uh, when darker bodybuilders win. When fans watching from TVs can't see it, if y'all been to a bodybuilding show, there's definitely things that get lost when it comes to live stream quality versus actually being there. And yes, with dark competitors as well. I definitely agree with that. Uh, Just the Beast says, the most unissued with Derek uh, were the two lumps in his lats in the front double, probably sight injection. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was a big issue um, for me. I don't know what it was. It's never been addressed to knowledge. And uh, I would like to see Derek actually address that directly. Um, he's not going to at this point. You know, it's done. But uh, again, that's something else that if he shows up, you know, um, with problems like that, then uh, yeah, it's going to cost him another Olympia title. Uh, Derek won fair and square. Oh, okay, so they're getting into the uh, the bikini division here now. I shouldn't say bikini; um, might be wellness. Um, so I guess we'll uh, we'll be going to the uh, the female division before we get to the men's open here. Um, I doubt that he'll answer me right now, but I'm going to try Tony and see what uh, see what he's saying. I know that he is ready. I will tell you right now that Tony O'Burton is ready, you guys. He's ready to come in and win it. 
he's definitely at his best. Um, he's been in Brazil for four weeks training now. And uh, yeah, you're going to see definitely the best version of uh, Tony O'Burton here coming up. Uh, I would dare say that this is uh, Wellness Division. <clears throat> okay, let's get caught up on some comments here. Uh, much better. Thanks. I appreciate, uh, appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, Matthew P. and Max O., appreciate you running this stream, Broski. Hey, I appreciate you being here. Thanks a lot for being here. I really appreciate every single one of you guys being here. I love doing these live streams. I was really glad that this was a free live stream so that I could actually, you know, just go live here on YouTube. So, yeah, thank you, all you guys, for being here. Um, but with that being said, you guys can go to the Muscle Contest International um, YouTube channel just to give them their their fair plug um, for the official live stream. Um, but you guys want to stick around with me? You know, I uh, I certainly appreciate having us. Uh uh, Le Leo Eris, the Le Leoris. I pro I apologize, bro. Uh, do I think Tonio can beat Raphael? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do think that Tonio can beat Raphael. Uh, I think that Raphael is not looking as good as he was going into the Arnold Ohio. And look, I can't say too much, but I can tell you guys that Raphael was threatened by Tonio going into this show. Tonio was actually training at Raphael's gym, okay? I'm telling you right now, some things went down, one thing in particular that I was made aware of, and it really just showed me that Raphael is trying to do anything in order to keep, from, keep Tonio from being at his best within his control. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. But that fire Tonio up is the other thing I'll say. Tonio went to his coach and just said, we got to dig deeper. I want to dig deeper. Tonio is coming for that win, man. He is. He's coming for that win. Uh, Davey has got Tonio, Raphael, and Vito. If Vito is brought up his back, he could be dangerous for second. He's got great. If good Vito be Raphael Brandau here, that would really be a statement. That would be a massive statement. Is it likely to happen? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. But uh, is it possible? Yeah, yeah, it's, it is possible. Oh, Tonio did message me. I, I told him, I said, you got this, man. He said, uh, I appreciate you, bro. We've gotten better since that post on the story. Yeah, most definitely. I'm sure he did, man. Tonio, he's been shooting me some, some pictures back and forth. You guys know, you know, I got to, I'm definitely rooting for Tonio. Um, and I do think that he's got a real legit shot at winning this. Definitely. I'm going to let him know that uh, there's a couple people in the live chat rooting for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to get Tonio back on the show. Um, once we uh once the smoke clears on uh on the uh, Arnold Brazil here, we'll get him back on the bodybuilding breakdown and he can give us a full rundown on exactly what goes down here. <sighs> so yeah, great dude, man. Really great dude. Uh Mr. Manuel says, EP, read my comment to both those uh sus lats from Derek, a professional judge from Spain talked about it. It's just a visual effect. Just a visual effect. That's quite a visual effect, bro. I gotta say, if it's just a visual effect, that's quite the visual effect. I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, Wellness Division is on now. Ruben Improved says, no way Tonio's winning. Why don't you tell me about that? Because I see a lot of people saying that uh, Tonio is going to win. If you think otherwise, let me know why you think that Tonio is not going to win. And let me know who you think is going to win. I'm definitely interested to hear, you know, the other side of it. Um, let's see. Uh, James Max says, the problem I had with Derek is I thought his prep went wrong. How does he have 10-pack uh, abs and couldn't show anything game day? I had him, uh, I had him to uh, pick him as a winner after Walker dropped out. 
Yeah, Derek tends to hit that vacuum, and actually, Marx Max Muscle did a recent comparison uh, with Derek in it. And when it comes to that abs and thigh, he just he hits that vacuum, and he doesn't suck down on them abs. He doesn't crunch down on them. And I think that it's absolutely part of hitting that pose properly, you know, by actually flexing the abs. It's an abs and thigh. It's not a vacuum and thigh, you know. But we'll see if he, uh, you know, makes any changes with that coming up this year. Uh, Kirker says, you should invite Fazzy Fitness, one of the best bodybuilding news channels. You know what? Maybe I should reach out to Fazzy. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be a guy I'd like to have on. Um, he is the most consistent bodybuilding YouTube channel in the game. There's no question. And he's got a fast, uh, fantastic physique, you know, in his own right. I, I'd like to see Fazzy actually compete, you know. I don't know why he doesn't. He would do He would do great, you know, men's physique or even classic. I'm sure he could build up to. He would. He would do great. Uh, James Max says, if he doesn't look as good as Ohio, he's losing for sure. When it comes to Raphael, I think that's that's definitely a possibility. He he has to be at least as good as Ohio, or it's going to be trouble, even given the fact that he's on home turf here. Uh, uh, Super Hood Cat, uh, you can't leave it at that. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it was nothing too, you know, um, nefarious, I'll say. But, yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely something where, like I said, Raphael is definitely threatened by Tonio. Um, Ruben improves. No, we all want to know what happened. I, man, like I said, I, I'm sworn to secrecy. <laughs> it, but I will say, like I said, it was nothing too nefarious. It's not like he tried to, you know, spike his meals with something poison, poisonous or anything like that. There was nothing like that. Um, but he did try to, you know, do what he could to to give him a little bit of a block. Um, I'm not gonna spill it. <laughs> uh, Fazzy's a grinder. Yeah, man, he is. No, I really like Fazzy Fitness. Uh, we're all here a little bit Tonio biased. We love Tonio here. We root for him. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, you know, Tonio's a, Tonio's a buddy of mine. Um, but at the same time, you know, to be fair, when it came to, uh, I was asked flat out on the last uh, bodybuilding breakdown by Kareth Bajo. Um, Kareth asked me who I had win in the New York Pro. And man, like, I got to say Nick Walker. You have to, and, and that's just being, you know, what it is. If Nick shows up off for some reason and Tonio is completely on, then maybe Tonio can sneak past him because we have seen Tonio beat, you know, bigger guys before. Now, with that being said, am I rooting for Tonio? <sighs> Absolutely. Absolutely I am. I'd love to see him win it. Uh, uh, let's see. What else we got? What else? Um... Uh, uh, do you think Tony O can be that Dexter Jackson figure of this bodybuilding generation? I think when it comes to the overall physique, Tony O most definitely can. I think that to be the Dexter Jackson figure when it comes to Dexter's record of competing, I don't know if we'll ever see that again. You know, Dexter won 30 pro shows. Was it 30 or 31? I do, uh, he's won Arnold Classics, he's won Olympias, he's won everything, you know? Physique-wise, Tony O'Can. Accolades-wise, I don't know. I don't think that's a goal for Tony O, you know? I don't think so. Um, let's see. Uh, Connie Alvarez, hey, what's up, Connie? Welcome back. Uh, Derek's lumps were not sight injections, you people are idiots. It was lymph nodes. Uh, Milos confirmed this on the Cutler cast. He had the same lumps for years now. Look at older pictures. I'll go back and look. Fair is fair. I'll, I'll go back and look. I'm not, uh, I'm not above it. James Mack, uh, Tonio was most improved for sure. I'd like to see him win for sure. If Brandale is off from Ohio, I have Tonio winning. Good Vito is not beating Tonio, I don't think. Still have Vito in third. Yeah. Yep, that's pretty much how I see it right now as well. That's pretty much how I see it. Um, Trent Rollins, uh, crazy physique on Fazzy. It's a shame he has low tier ab genetics. Yeah, yeah, and and Fazzy's uh, you know spoken about that in the past about how he just doesn't have that defined. He's obviously a foot pack, you know. So in men's physique, actually, that wouldn't treat him very well. Um, in any competition, it probably wouldn't. I still think he should step on stage though. You know, I, th I think he should. Uh, 
All right, you guys are killing it in the comment section. Uh, Ruben improves. Uh, all right, obviously Tonio is very complete and uh, has really good lines and style conditioning, but in my opinion, he lacks separation, and Raphael has really good separation, and Vito probably also. So yeah, I have Raphael winning, taller, more separation, comparable lines, and conditioning. All right, look, I appreciate your opinion, dude. I, I appreciate it. I think that going into the show here, Tonio did not look like he had the separation in his quads because, you know, his quads were pumped up. The last few days of him posting, uh, you know, some pictures, he looked like he had more. He looked like he had a lot more. So I think that maybe it was a little bit deceiving with some of the updates as we've talked about with other competitors as well. It can happen, you know, on the other side of things. So we're going to find out here very, very soon, you guys. We should be having the men's open come on very shortly. And uh, that's the only division that uh, that we're going to be looking at here today, actually, um, until the finals. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see uh, see how these guys look and take it from there. Uh, Ruben improved. I have Raphael winning. Taller, more separation. Yeah, that, yeah, I mentioned that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Manuel, yeah, of course, we support Tonio, but we are realistic. I can see Nick winning New York Pro for sure. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, not uh, not a slight on uh, Tonio whatsoever. Uh, Tonio will be at the Olympia this year. Whether he wins this one or goes to Cali, it, he'll he'll be at the Olympia. I think he's like two... F Actually, Tonio told me he's like 227 <laughs> as of like two or three days ago, I think, which is really, really light. Um, he can still suck down and do 212, I bet, <laughs> you know, which is pretty crazy to think. Um, James Mack, uh, Connie, I agree if Brandeo doesn't look as good as Ohio, I don't think he beats Tonio. Yeah, I don't think so either. No, I really don't. Um, Trent Rollins, Dexter is a top 12 bodybuilder of all time. Absolutely. No question. Uh, let's see. Um, what's the point of insulting Connie? We're just chilling. Give your point of respect. I don't think you were talking about me. Um, let's see. Davey Addict agreed, Mr. Manuel. Yeah, got to keep it respectful for sure. You got to keep it respectful. Um, and you guys do. You guys, uh, like my comment section, you guys, you guys are always killing it with, uh, you know, with kindness. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, uh, if Tonio can get his legs to have deeper separation, he's solid top six at the O. Solid top six at the O for Tonio. That's that's an interesting one. Yep, that's definitely an interesting one. I'd love to see him top six at the O. There's some guys that just really outsize him. And at the end of the day, like conditioning being important, all that fun shit, no question. But you got to bring that size, bro. I've said it from the very beginning. At the end of the day, it is a muscle, like it's it's a muscle contest, you know? But Tonio is going to be bigger. So, we'll see. I'd love to see him top six. I think he's definitely got the potential. Uh, Josh12 says, I was in person for the Arnold, Ohio. Raphael will be downsized for this show. Really? Really? Now... I'd, I'd like to hear more about that. What makes you think that uh, Raphael is going to be downsized for this show? That's that's interesting. Based on some of the update pictures, it looked like he was going to be less conditioned. But, let, yeah, l let me know. Let me know. That's interesting. Um, I hope Vito holds poses. I watched his pro winning show and that man could not pose. Uh, yeah, and that's typical of a lot of new pros. They need to learn... One, how to execute the poses properly in order to show all of their, you know, positive characteristics. But also, just being able to hold those poses for long enough, a lot of guys will rush through them. And that's just the thing that comes with experience. We'll see how he does here. We'll see. Um, Kirker says, uh, how about a bodybuilding show news channel edition? Would love to see uh, Max doing some flexing. You mean Merck? Merck's done it. Um Mark usually does a full round of uh, mandatory poses before the um, Mark's Max Muscle Invitational. You see it every year. He goes through a full round. And uh, 
Merck's got a great physique, man. You know, he's got a great physique for uh, for a guy his age and uh, being completely natural. Um, Merck's just a great dude, you know. Really good buddy of mine. Uh, uncertain through. Our finals tonight or tomorrow? Finals are indeed tonight. Indeed tonight. Uh, we'll be going live for the finals tonight, you guys. We're just uh, getting through the wellness division here, and then I believe we are going to be going into the men's open division. So that'll be coming up soon. Uh, they're just going through the individual routines for the wellness division now. Then they'll do the comparisons, and then we'll be looking at uh, we'll be looking at uh, the men's open, I believe. So stick around, you guys. It's going to be a fantastic show, and we're getting real close. We're getting real close. I'm actually going to see if I can look up how many competitors there are in the uh, in the wellness division. I'm not sure if I can find it. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brandon Oberim, I wouldn't be surprised if Tonio wins. Nor me. Won't be surprised at all. Uh, let's see. Trent Rollins, what's your favorite muscle group or attribute on a bodybuilder? For me, it's the waistline. Would love your opinion, EP. Hmm. Favorite muscle group or attribute on a bodybuilder. Well, I think when it comes to my like my personal favorite muscle group, um, I find a set of arms very impressive. If you've really got the guns, man, I think that the arms are probably my favorite muscle group. It's just it's so it's so impressive to just see like a real jacked set of arms, especially when it has that 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 proportion, you know, the bicep peak and the proper size of bicep compared to tricep. It really just makes a physique. And when the arms are lacking, you know, that's something that is, uh, that's something that I find is most noticeable, you know, on a physique. Um, guys with, uh, you know, guys with a really good set of arms. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think arms is, uh, is where it's at. Um, waistline is definitely important. I, I agree with that. That's probably the biggest attribute. Uh, in this day and age of modern bodybuilding for me, you got to have that tight waistline. But man, you bring the guns, you know, people are impressed by it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ruben proves off topic, but ha do I have any tips on how to grow a YouTube ch uh, to grow as a YouTube channel? Consistency is definitely the biggest one, I would say. Um, making sure that your audience has a uh, expectation of your content. Uh, delivering on that expectation, making it entertaining, making it visually engaging. Um, good thumbnails, good titles. All of those things will make it, and, and good quality. You gotta have good quality. Your audio has to be good, the video has to be good. Those are those are very important. If it's poor quality, it's gonna be a tough go. Uh, <clears throat> good question, thank you. Uh, is anyone else notable here? We keep talking about Tonio, Rafa, Raphael, and Vito, but uh, is anyone else threatening? <sighs> Not really. No. Um, there's nobody else that's really going to be able to stand with uh, those th those uh, three guys. Which, you know, that's typical of bodybuilding shows. You'll have your standouts, and then... Uh, you know, you'll have, uh, I don't want to say everybody else, but, you know, usually it's the guys that are still coming up in the sport. Like, for this year, um, originally it was supposed to be, uh, like I said, John De La Rosa. Uh, Jonathan Emmanuel Padilla Gonzalez, he's a good competitor, um, but oh, William Martins, you know, William Martins is someone of note. Uh, we can We can say that. He's a big guy with a lot of muscle. Um, if he brings that conditioning... We could be seeing someone that be, uh, you know, a contender for that top four, top five. My arm keeps disappearing, and it's pissing me off. Anyway, um, I need to keep what size I have on the arms, bros. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so, yeah, William Martins is someone else that's of note here. Definitely, definitely. I shouldn't have, uh, I shouldn't have gone so long without mentioning him, actually. So, yeah, he is someone of note. Uh... Let's see, uh, Raphael is going to get smoked from the back by Tonio. Separation and conditioning from behind is subpar for Raphael. Antonio is just as good from behind as Derek. That's a big statement. 
that's a big statement. To say that Tony O'Burton is as good as Derek Lunsford from behind, big statement. Um, I think that uh, when it comes to the X frame, maybe Derek is a little bit more impressive than Tony O. I would say overall detail uh, would be comparable. I like the flow of Tony O better uh, from the back. Um, so you could make that comparison. Every time I do one of these live streams, it's funny. I always think of something that Mark should do a comparison of. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to message Mark now and I'm going to tell him to do a comparison of the uh, 2024 uh, Tony O'Burton Arnold Classic here with the 2023 Derek Lunsford Olympia. And let's see if he uh, does it. I don't know if you guys would enjoy seeing comparisons on my channel or not. I did a couple comparisons back in the day. Um, similar to the Marks Max muscle style. But I don't know. Uh, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments if uh, that's something that uh, you guys would like to see uh, a little bit more content on. I typically just disappear when it comes to doing live stream stuff. Um, I typically just stick to my news videos and, and, and these live streams and, and podcasting. Uh, anyway, I'm going to message Mark. Uh, Derek Lunsford, 2023 Olympia versus Tonio, 2024 Arnold Classic. Brazil. Just as a reminder. There. We'll see it. Um, okay. Let's get caught up on some comments here. Uh, Raphael had to play the side game at the Arnold Ohio due to the competitor list, such as Samson and Hottie being, uh, being two of the biggest guys in open as we speak. Tonio being sliced and diced, he will not be as full. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see if that's uh, if that's going to be the case with Raphael. Um, is that going to be a good strategy? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think that he, if he could replicate his look from uh, the Arnold Ohio, he would have a very, very good shot at winning here. Uh, how old is Tonio? He's like 31, 32. He's either 31 or 32. Um room to improve that's why i love Crizo. yeah that's why i love Crizo too it's the guns baby you gotta have them guns right yeah arms are fantastic there's something about a good set of guns man you know it's true uh davy attic says tonio's back is untouchable here that's why i have him taking it uh, he's not lacking anything aside from deeper separation in the quads but everything else is spot on the vascularity in his back yeah tonio really isn't missing very much there's no question there overall size yes but flow, um, you know, conditioning, vascularity, these are all things that Tonio has in spades. You know, all of his mandatories, and that's rare to see in a bodybuilder, all of his mandatories are really good, you know, from the front, from the side, from the back. And that's why he has such, such massive potential. Uh, they're just doing the... Uh, comparisons here um for the uh wellness division and after that i'm expecting the uh, men's open to be on so stick to stick around you guys we're going to be very very close to the men's open here i think uh let's see uh josh 12 th thanks for um, thanks for explaining josh i appreciate it man uh he'll either miss his peak due to trying to match tonio's conditioning or be downsized and shredded not as full as ohio good veto will win <clears throat> okay, here we go. Good Vito will win if his posing is fixed and his back is shredded. His size is key. That's interesting. That's interesting. I haven't seen anybody saying that Good Vito will actually win this show as of yet. So yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, Tonio is going to have to be pretty far off, I think, for Good Vito. Or, or I shouldn't say that, because Tonio is going to be on. But Good Vito is going to have to be massively more impressive. Than, uh, than what I think he's going to show up as. But, hey, we'll see. <clears throat> uh, Mac Elmo 74 I really wanted to see Carlos compared to Good Vito. Yeah, man, I wanted to see Carlos compared to everybody. You know, I really wanted to see Carlos Thomas Jr. in this lineup. There's a guy that has the potential, legit potential, to be top five at the Olympia in a very short period of time here. Very short period of time. He's not missing anything except conditioning. And 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 a back. He does need to bring up his back. 
but he does have that potential. No question. It's it's too bad he's not in this show. Uh, let's see. Can William Mertens crack the top three? Yeah, that's that's possible. If William Mertens nails his conditioning and Good Vito is really, really uh, like if Good Vito completely screws up here, you know, in the last twenty four hours, and William Mertens is on, yeah. Yeah, I think he can. Yeah. Unlikely, though. I will say that. Unlikely. <clears throat> um, let's see here. A um, few comments on the uh, on the wellness division here. Uh, blue in the bikini has the best disproportionate glute to body proportion, which is uh, graded well in this division. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's what they that's what they go for in wellness for sure. Um, haven't really made a lot of comments about this guys because I don't know the competitors. It's not a division that I follow. Um, all the respect in the world to this uh, to the division, you know, all the women's divisions, but uh, it's just not what I follow. Um, Leo Iris, uh, I pr I again apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, bro. Um, do you think Raphael is better than Samson, both with theoretical peak physiques, so equal uh, muscularity and near hottie level conditioning? Do I think Raphael is better than Samson? Um, no. No, I, I, I don't think so, no. I think that Raphael still needs more size in order to be considered you know, as good as Samson. With that being said, when Raphael did stand next to Samson at the Arnold Classic Ohio, he was bigger than I thought originally. I just still think that he needs a bit more size to really say that they're going to be comparable. But I, I think he can do it. Um, Connie Alvarez says, After Tonio takes this show, I have him second at New York Pro and top six at the Olympia. Very good, very good. I would love to see it. I would love to see it. I think he does have that potential, especially since it's still early in the season before the Olympia. Tonio can go and make improvements. And Tonio makes improvements very quickly. You guys got to remember, like I said, right now, Tonio is about 227 pounds. That's nothing compared to some of these guys that are going up on stage at, you know, 260, 270. He's got a ton of room to grow. A ton of room. Now, weight doesn't necessarily mean anything, but um, is it a measuring stick to a degree? Yeah, it is. 227 is very light for an open bodybuilder, and he brings it, you know, even standing next to bigger guys. Uh, let's see. Um, da -da 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 Carlos, if conditioned, smokes all these guys. Entirely possible. Definitely possible. Carlos Thomas Jr. is a marvel when it comes to overall physique. It's too bad that, uh, you know, he, he couldn't be in this show because we would have seen if he really made any improvements. Like I said, he needs to improve from the back and he needs to improve the conditioning. When he does those two things, that's it. That's it. He'll win any show that he decides to walk into, in my opinion, for the most part. And we'll see him at the Olympia in the top 10 for sure. Leo Aris. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll, I got it now. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. Um, Vito appeared to be very short even next to Tonio, and he is not there yet for a win, in my opinion. Frank Rizzo. Yeah, Vito is the king of goon lighting, and he definitely does look taller in his Instagram pictures than he maybe is in real life. And that's going to hurt him. That's going to hurt him. Um... If he was a tall guy and he really carried that much muscle, you know, if he was 5'11", kind of thing, with that much muscle, he'd be he'd be tough to beat. You know, he'd be on the level of, like, Samson Dowda for size. But, yeah, he's not as tall as he appears. Uh, Faraz says, men's wellness was popping up a while ago. Is that a good direction for bodybuilding? No. No, it's not. Um... It popped up once, and we haven't seen it since, and I don't think that we will see it again. It was very, very poorly received by the masses of bodybuilding fans. 
because it's simply just going too far, in my opinion. I don't think that it would be good for bodybuilding, and I don't think that you'll see it in bodybuilding. There are, and, and regardless of if it was men's wellness or any other division that they wanted to add in at this point, there are too many divisions as it is in terms of running a show smoothly and on time. I mean, Tony O'Burton told me himself that this show, or the men's open prejudging, was going to start at 1 o'clock. And here we are at 1.36 uh, Atlantic time. There's too many divisions. They need to stick with what they have now. And they can't afford to add any more. They, they just can't. <clears throat> um, I believe that Tonio was almost 212 at the Mr. Olympia. He has put on some mass. Yeah, Tonio was like 214.8, if um, memory serves me correctly. It's just insane. So even in that short amount of time between the Olympia and now, you know, 13 pounds-ish of stage weight, 12, 13 pounds, crazy, you know, crazy. That's a ton of size in that amount of time, you guys. Think about what he'll be able to put on between now and the Olympia if he wins here. You know, it's insane to think. Massively improved. Um, James Max says, Tonio needs... 15 to 23 more pounds of muscle and he'd be top five or six for sure could be better uh if he does it right more size is definitely going to benefit tonio no question more size and he will gain that size he will all right they're just doing the comparisons now of the uh the wellness division and like i said you guys we should be rolling right into the open uh pre-judging so let's see it <clears throat> Trent Rollins has an eye for wellness. Um, yeah, right on, bro. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, no men's wellness, yuck. Yeah, it's just it just doesn't fit. You know, it just doesn't fit in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> Leo Aris, I don't think we've had a truly good big man in the pro circuit. We've had a domination of the good short man. Do you think we will get this good big man anytime soon? You know, there was talk about that at the end of the 2023 Olympia because we were seeing some of the taller guys starting to do, you know, pretty well. Uh, your Samson Dowdas, your Michael Crizos, you know, these guys are very tall, but they have done a very good job of filling out their frames. Do I think we'll get the good big man anytime soon? I haven't seen anybody that's in contention to be uh, Mr. Olympia. As of yet. As of yet. Is it possible? Well, Samson could be that next person. That's possible. Um, Crizo, I still think, has a little ways to go when it comes to being in that conversation for Mr. Olympia. Um, Andrew Jacked is gaining a lot of size right now. I think he made the right move of taking the time off in order to improve, put on that muscle. He is looking a lot bigger. We'll see when he actually decides to shred down how much bigger. So he could be that next person. So there's a few guys that are potentially on the radar for that. Yeah. Yeah, at the Olympia level, absolutely. Um, Connie Alvarez, if Nick's quads from the front aren't symmetrical or improved... It's not a guaranteed win because Tonio can take it from him. If Nick quads from the front aren't... Yeah, from the front. Um, Tonio is probably going to beat Nick in the front double and the front lat spread. Um, Nick is not as good in those poses. From the side, it's going to be a tough battle. And from the back... Well, Nick's legs do look good from the back. That's the thing. You can see more of a quad sweep emphasis from Nick's legs in the back than you can from the front, without question, without question. So I don't know. It's it, nothing is a guarantee. Nothing is a guarantee, especially when you have somebody that is you know so well conditioned and has such good flow and aesthetic qualities as a guy like Tony. It's going to be a very exciting show. That we can say one hundred percent. Um. I'm here because I'm the uh, D. Candace says I'm here because you're the only one streaming the women category. Really, is nobody else 
stream this right now. Boys all took a break. Um, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'll tell you that. No, I'm not going anywhere. And like I said, all the respect in the world to the women's divisions. Absolutely. All the respect in the world. Um, let's see. Uh, we have the good big man, Andrew Jack, if he puts on the size. Yeah, that's like I said. If if he does put on the size, then yeah, I, I agree. Um, this must be your top three in the wellness division because, you know, really, really... You want to talk about leg development, you know? Man, this is some leg development. Look at the look at the quad sweep on these girls, man. These women have insane quad sweeps. Yeah, muscle discord, yeah. I figured that Matt was still streaming over there. Um yeah, Matt's a good dude. Um yeah, insane insane quads on uh, on these women here, man. Like like I said, this is where the respect really comes in. Just an incredible development. Yeah, incredible. <clears throat> Davey yeah, added, it's not hard to tell that you've been competing uh, pretty recently, bro. You've been in your own little bubble, and I think you got to get out. <laughs> yeah, time to uh, time to go do some uh, time to go do some uh, socializing, bro. Socializing. <laughs> um, Nick's miss size Nick's miss size may cost him cost him to win the O, which I believe he can win the O. Yeah, Leo Aris. I agree. I agree. He brings up those legs and he's got a shot. No question. Um Faraz, like and sub, good man. Hey, thanks for being here, bro. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Welcome. Um these girls have better quad sweeps than Nick. You know, Davey. I was thinking that, but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> but this is, you know, the the legs and glute division, right? You know what? Maybe Nick should be should get some training from one of these wellness girls uh, on on actually growing his legs. I imagine that from social media perspective, that would I I'd be I'd be into that, man. I think that uh, I think Nick could definitely learn, you know. Um, definitely gain some size and maybe a, a, a couple of uh, a couple of different exercises routines and things like that that'd be interesting uh ruben improves uh what's your opinion on uh even bodybuilding i absolutely love that channel i'm a fan uh even bodybuilding has been around for a long time he is very straightforward with his opinion he pulls zero punches he gives his honest opinion he is a competitor himself and a very good competitor in classic as well. Um, even bodybuilding is a great channel. Yeah. I actually messaged him to come on the bodybuilding breakdown, but he seems to do his own thing. And uh, he's not really part of the, you know, the, the circuit like some of us are for, you know, YouTube commentators. Um, but r regardless, man, great channel. Yeah, great channel. Yeah, Davey, you do. You, and you got this, bro. You got it. Um <clears throat> Connie Alvarez, don't forget about Quint Beastwood, fellas. Dude is looking pretty damn impressive. He's 6'2", just like Andrew. You're right. That is somebody that needs to be mentioned in that conversation for the good big man. Quint Beastwood is looking fantastic, and he will be at the New York Pro. So, yeah, that's a guy that we can't forget about and we can't sleep on. I'm going to make sure to do a night on uh, Quint Beastwood in, my, uh, in an upcoming news video as well. We'll be seeing a lot of Quint Beastwood. Uh, let's see, uh, Leo Aris, I meant the one leg being smaller than the other right now. Um, yeah, yeah, that is something that Nick, uh, that Nick needs to potentially work on as well. Uh, uncertain through, what does Regan need to improve? <sighs> Regan crimes. What does Regan need to improve? Whew. Regan still needs more size. I think it comes down to size for Regan. Um, more size more conditioning he just needs to improve on what he has and uh you know he'll continue to move up <clears throat> uh bro if you could get nick antonio on before the new york pro that would be something wouldn't it um maybe i'll work on that maybe maybe i'll work on it i know I, Antonio is going to come back on i think you'll see tony on semi-regularly but uh to have nick and tony on the same podcast you're right that would be epic bro I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. 
All right, guys, we're getting into the open. We are officially into the open. We've got Raphael Brandel right out of the gate. So we're starting paying here, you guys. All right, here we go. Here we go. Raphael. Great proportion. Nice proportions. Looks like the conditioning is pretty good here. He's a quad separation. I think he got a good level of fullness here. Good separation in the leg from the side. He's kind of rushing, I find, though. He's going a little quick. Good X frame, decent uh, hamstring separation. Christmas tree is in for the most part. He's definitely fuller. Back lat spread is good. Midsection looks pretty good. The abs are pretty much in. He is not as conditioned as what I think it's going to take to defeat someone like Tony. Um, but that's that, that might be a little bit too early to say. That might be too early to say. Speaking of which, here we go. Tony O'Burton, you guys. Now we get to see exactly what improvements we have from Tony. Great aesthetics, man. Fantastic aesthetics. Looks good from the side. Uh, running way behind, so they're giving them 45 seconds to go through the mandatories. Yeah, okay. Well, that would make sense, I guess. Um, oh, man. That bet. That's a fantastic back double. Fantastic back double from Tonio. Back lat spread, that is a tough one to beat. He's very, very difficult to beat from the back. Tonio's got good separation in the quads. That midsection is on point. The shoulders, the, the, man, the shoulders on Tonio. Insane, bro. This is a good showing. Really good showing for Tonio Burton, you guys. Really good showing. Okay, um, I need to get my audio here so I can actually hear who is coming on stage. I know that it's... Okay. All right. I don't, uh, don't know this competitor's name in particular. Um, it's pretty good, though. Not bad. This is a this is a big guy. Tall guy. I saw him going into the show. I, I can't remember his name. I apologize. I can't remember his name. Yeah, Tonio looked crazy. You guys are going nuts over Tonio. Man. All right, here we go. Good veto, you guys. We have a lot of quad detail from Good Vito. Yeah, a lot of quad detail. Looks like he does have that feathering in the uh, in the teardrops. A lot of separation in the in the side leg. Now let's see. Good separation in the hamstrings and the glutes. Decent detail in the back. He needs more depth, I think, in the back, but there's there's a decent amount of detail there. Not bad. Not bad, actually. Good veto showed up, you guys. Definitely showed up. That's a top three physique. Uh, I think this is... Um, uh, I can't remember this guy's name either. Some of these f uh, competitors I'm not as familiar with you guys. Um, I need Mark to join me on some of these live streams. Um, I think this is uh, uh, Jonathan uh, Gonzalez, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, this uh, this guy's got a good physique as well. Actually, everybody's showing up here in really good condition, I gotta say. Could use a little bit more separation in the quads, but uh, not bad overall, not bad. Yeah, not bad.
Okay, so this is um, this is uh, Alan Ramiro uh, Bonadimin, Bonadimin. Um, looks like someone that needs a little bit more uh, overall size. Um, conditioning needs more conditioning as well. From the back, yeah, de he's got he's got decent lats, I think, decent width. But uh, yeah, definitely more overall size. This is this is a taller guy that uh, really needs to fix his gyno as well. <laughs> um, okay, there you go. All right. Next up is a uh, Jefferson Oliveira. <clears throat> So let's see. Now I get caught up on some comments from you guys. Uh, Vito has improved his back, some for sure. Looks flat, but definitely conditioned. Yeah, the conditioning is definitely there for good Vito. Yeah, for sure. Um, he showed up, no question. <clears throat> yeah, guy needs to get the gun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Banana Man, he needs to get that guy removed for sure. Um, this here is uh, Jefferson uh, Oliveira. He's got he's got decent conditioning, I think, especially from the back here. Pretty decent. Needs to improve his posing for sure. He's leaning back way too far in the upper body and arching that lower back way too much, way too much. He's got a, a really wide rib cage. It looks like too. That <laughs> front double guy, no. Yeah, honest to God, yeah. All right. Next up is uh, Devison Texiera, and I apologize uh, if I am mispronouncing that, which I definitely am. Um, pretty, but good, good, a good amount of striations through the chest and shoulders, I'll say. Could use some work on posing overall. Looks like an older gentleman, we'll say, but uh, you know, for being an older guy. Respectable front double. Respectable. Decent uh, separation in the side leg. He's not really hitting all of his mandatories as he goes. You know, that's uh, that's kind of a mistake. Decent separation in the back. Could use some more overall width. Well, in the back itself. In the hamstrings and glutes, it's pretty much non-existent. Um... Yeah, there you go. And here come uh here comes uh William Martins. Martins. William Martins. So let's see. Good separation in the quads. Needs to drop those shoulders on that front lat spread. Oh, yeah, great side chest. Yeah, really good side chest. Good conditioning from the back. Needs more lats. Yeah, needs more lats overall. That could be an insertion thing. Yeah, it looks like it is an insertion thing. Flats insert high. One of the few guys that I saw hit the side tricep here. Good most muscular. Yeah, William Martins. Very good. He's a big dude. Yeah, he's a big dude. All right. I think we've got one more. Okay. I don't know who this is, actually. I don't think he's on the... He's on my list. I didn't quite, uh, didn't quite catch it. This guy's got actually pretty good separation. It's a good back double. That's a really good back double. Didn't do a back lat spread, unfortunately. Yeah, a little, uh, a little small overall. That back double was pretty good. 
Uh, Trent Rollins says, is it really bodybuilding if you have the waist of a strong man? Just my opinion. Is it? Um, you got to keep that midsection in check these days. There's no question. You got to keep that midsection in check. All right. So that is all of the individuals um, for prejudging you guys. They're going to bring everybody out and we're going to see our first call out. So how are they going to go? Are they going to bring out five and five? I would say if they're going to do that, you're going to be looking at uh, Raphael, Tonio, Goodido. I'd say William Martins and. Uh, Ah, yes, okay. Okay, is this your top five? I would have expected to see William Martins if this is the top five. Let's see if they move anyone around. <laughs> Tell your lats are popping from the front row. Okay, yeah, this is just the... Uh, this is just the initial call outs. Raphael's kind of rushing through, I find. Good veto looks pretty good. I give the conditioning to Tonio at this point, I think. Yeah, Tonio looks hard as nails, man. But good veto. Good veto's conditioned, you guys. Good veto is conditioned. He might be a little flat, um, and he doesn't have the, uh, the 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 symmetry and aesthetics as these guys in the front relaxed. Front double's a good shot for a lot of these guys. Last, okay, okay. Vito is really good in this. Wow. You're seeing a lot of separation in that lower body from good Vito. A lot. Back double. Wow. Very good. Tonio and Raphael definitely battling for the for the win in the back double. But good veto is conditioned. I think Raphael was a little soft in the lower body in the back shots. It's a good shot for uh, good veto as well. Abs and thigh, I'd give that to Tonio. His midsection is just too good. Most muscular. Good Vito looks good. He's he's going to be battling for... Oh, man. I don't know. First, second, third here? Now, this is kind of interesting. They actually did not move anyone to the center of who you would expect to be in, you know, first, second, third. You guys that follow bodybuilding on a regular basis, you guys know that typically they'll take, you know, the top guys and put them right in the center in order to compare them. They did not do that this time. So I do expect that there's going to be a top three call out and uh, you'll see it, you know, Tony O'Reilly and uh, Good Vito. And then they'll start moving them around a little bit. That's that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, a lot of you guys are, are really impressed by Good Vito. And, and I am as well. I, I am really impressed. I don't know what William Martins is trying to accomplish with a pose like that. That was strange. If, uh, if Good Vito defeats Raphael Brandau, especially on home turf, <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what I'll say to that. I don't know. That's that's this is really really turning out to be an interesting show. Antonio and Good Vito battling for first and second. I agree. I. Um, Sharp Home Solutions, that was just the Linos brother. Well, you see, they're getting them to do the front lat spread too, right? And they don't they don't always do that. Or the or or the side chest or most muscular. I don't think so. 
I don't think. Usually it's just a quarter turns, maybe a front double and then a back double, right? Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. William Martins is, uh, he really needs to work on his stance. If he brought those feet together, I think his legs would look bigger. Yeah, let's see. James Max says, Tonio looks like the winner from my kitchen table. Dale may end up in third. That'd be terrible for him, but it's possible. Absolutely possible. Goat Fitness. Krishan, give me your top four so far, brother. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. You've got Rafa winning. Okay. 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 He, he does have the aesthetics. You know, he does. Um, I watch a ton of Brazil shows and they do it in almost all of them. Fair Home Solution says it's confusing. Yeah, that's definitely not typical of what we see from uh, from other shows out there. Vito is definitely in shape. Yes, he is. He is in shape. But um, he looks a little flat. Condition, though? Man, absolutely. And he is big enough to potentially get away with being just a little bit flat. Just a little bit. Yep, I agree. I agree. Good Vito showed up. Good Vito definitely showed up. All right, so. Now we're going to be looking at our first call out, you guys. We got Raphael, we got Tonio. Bringing out good veto. And William Mertens. And uh, Alan Panadamit. Okay, so they're doing a they're doing a top five. Alright, they're doing a top five. Let's see it. Alright. You guys you guys call it out. Call it out. Who do you got? Okay, front double. Man, Antonio's waist is tight, man. Man, I'd give that one to Tonio. Front lat spread. That's, again, another one I'd... Raphael looks good in that one, but Tonio's midsection, that X-frame, man, really does it for me. Side chest. I think Raphael might take the side chest. He's got a little bit more arm, arm thickness than Tonio. Raymond Jones, what's up, brother? Thanks for being here. Back double. They got to get these guys to spread out. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Boys are getting a little aggressive. Boys are getting a little aggressive. I think Raphael knows that he's in trouble here, bro. I think Raphael is... I think he knows he's a little bit in trouble. Look at that. He's like smash Antonio in good veto. Anyway, for the pose... Execution-wise, good veto doesn't hit a great back double. He doesn't hit a great back... A lot of detail, though. I'd probably go with Tonio for the back double and the back lat spread as well. Yeah, good veto really does need to learn how to pose. And I said that earlier, that that's one of the common mistakes of new guys. Side chest, or side tricep, rather. I think that's a good, I, I think that's a Raphael post. I think he took that one. <laughs> Abs and thigh. That's Tonio for me all day. But man, those quads on good veto. That is insane, man. He has a lot of detail on those quads. A lot of detail. Most muscular, I might give to good veto. Like I said, he looks like he's a little, a little flat though, a little flat. All right, so that's your first call out, you guys. My guess is that they're going to do the second call out, and then they'll do a top three. 
All right. Let me know what you guys think so far. Antonio for the win. Raphael looks worse than his last show. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. And like I said, he was getting pretty aggressive on stage. I think he knows. He's probably in trouble. Uh, Raphael looks sopped, like spilled over. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I was expecting more detail in the uh, in the front and in the side. That side leg on Raphael is not as good as it was in Ohio. Raphael was raging. Yeah, he was, man. He was. He's he's an aggressive dude, you know? He's he's aggressive. You get in trouble for that shit on stage, too. Like you can you can get in trouble for like over like getting a little bit too aggressive and elbowing guys and shit. You can you can get in trouble for that. The back poses for Tonio are insane. Yeah, man, they are insane. Cause his midsection looks so small too, right? He really got that uh that midsection dialed in. Uh Leo Aris says Raph is still reasonably dom dominant due to his height, but the door is still open. Tonio is so on. Vito is great too, but too soft comparatively without the height of Raphael. Yeah, and Vito gotta learn how to pose. He he really needs to learn how to hit them poses. Um He wasn't he wasn't quite as good when it comes to posing execution as guys like Tonio and Raphael that have a lot of experience. But can he make improvements between now and uh, the finals? Yeah. Yeah, I think he can. Definitely. James Max says I got Tonio winning this joint. Yep. I I think I'd uh, I think that I'd give this one to Tonio as well. Um side tricep I might give to Raphael. Um Side chest, I might give to Raphael as well. Most muscular, maybe good veto, but I think Tony is win everything else. And that's and, and that's uh you know questionable when it comes to the the uh, side chest. All right, let's see a top three. Come on. Uh, maybe they're doing the battle from uh, fourth to seventh, maybe, or maybe this is the battle for fourth. Yeah, this looks like the battle for fourth place. Yeah, this looks like the battle for fourth place, you guys. Man, that midsection on William Mertens, it is wide. It is. A lot wider than I was expecting. All right, let's see what else you guys think. Uh, Vito is crunch it is... Uh, Approaching that makes him even smaller. Yeah, it does. It does. Really wide stance on the legs. I found from Good Vito that uh, that makes him look shorter. Look like Martin is cramping. Yeah, he might be. Good side chest. I'll give him that. Good Vito's abs were a little washed out. Yeah, they were. Yep. Especially when you're standing next to guys like Tony O'Burton and Raphael Brandau, who have ridiculous midsections. You know the ab wall. You're gonna look wa you're gonna look even more washed out when it comes to the midsection. Let's see, good Vito's have, yeah. Um this is conditioning and bodybuilding. Uh and Brandeo is off, you can tell. Yep, definitely Brandeo was off from what we saw at uh at the Ohio. Man, he was on in Ohio. Really. Raphael Roy Rage Brandeo. Yeah, Leo Harris, you're right, man. <laughs> Yeah. He's on home turf, though. You know, he's fired up. I get it. I get it. Uh, Vito is taller than Tonio. I think maybe, maybe a little bit. I I, I, I want to see a top three Kahlo so I can really see what's going on. Raymond Jones. Tarek won't like if Rafa loses in his home country. <laughs> yeah, he won't. No, he won't be happy about that at all. Especially, you guys might remember, after the 2022 Olympia, Tarek El Gindi on Olympia TV was really hyping up Raphael Brando for his aesthetics, and that's where he called Nick Walker a box, where he said guys like Nick Walker are going to look like a box in Raphael. That pissed me off, actually. <laughs> I made a video about it. Um, James Max says, Vito is a rookie. Some posing practice and for his pro debut, he looks great. I agree. I agree. I think for his pro debut that he does look good. And especially with Chris Aceto in his corner, he just needs time. He just needs time. 
is he fighting for a top two here in his pro debut? Yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> All right, here we go. Top three. Let's see a top three. All right, we got Raphael, we got Tonio, and we got good Vito. This is what we've been waiting for, you guys. This is what we've been waiting for. All right. Let's see it. Let's see it. Ah, God bless the camera guy for zooming in there. Beautiful. Uh, any of good Vito here. I'll just adjust a little bit. All right, let's see it, you guys. Let's go. Let's go. Front double. Man, good video is on, man. A lot of quad detail. Tonio's just got those aesthetics, though. Yeah, good video's not a short dude, no. Side chest. Raphael looks like he's getting a little better as he poses. He, he, well, we'll we'll know we'll know from the back. We'll know. All right, let's see it. Let's see it. Oh, that's Tonio all day, man. That's Tonio all day. That back double. That's Tonio. Back lat spread. I'd go with Tonio. Yep, I'd go with Tonio. Raphael is not very well separated in the lower body from the back. He's definitely, he's he looks filled over. Side tricep. Side tricep would either be Raphael or Good Vito. Abs and thigh. That's going to be Tonio. That's going to be Tonio for me. Although Good Vito's quads are fantastic, man. They're really well separated. Most muscular. Tonio looks really good in the most muscular. That's interesting. All right, they're moving Tonio to the center. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. Let's see it. Front double. <sighs> good. It looks good in that front double, man. Tonio's getting better as he poses too, though. Like, I'd give this side chest to Tonio. But good Vito does have that separation in the lower body. Don't get me wrong. He does. Back double. I'd give the Tonio. Yeah, Raphael is breathing heavy, man. He's breathing heavy. Yep. Yep. I'd give that abs and thigh probably to Tonio. Yeah, that hands clasp is a good pose for uh, for Tonio there. Raphael just is, he spilled over, man. I think good Vito could be ahead of Raphael right now. Well, there you go, you guys. That is officially the pre-judging. No. Are they doing another one? No, they're just bringing out everybody. Okay, okay. So this is your pre-judging for the 2024 Arnold Classic South America. Very, very exciting show. Man, very exciting. So, let's hear it, you guys. Let's talk about it. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Who's going to take it home? Who's taking it home in the finals? For me... I think that you're going to see Tony O'Burton 
ahead after prejudging. You've got, I think, good veto ahead of Raphael Brando, to be honest. Raphael looks spilled over. I think you're going to have Raphael in third place here. Which I was not, um, was not expecting. I think more so because I was expecting good veto to not be as conditioned as what we're seeing here. Raphael is off, for sure. What do you guys think? Let's see. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Vito's back double is better than Raphael's. Yeah, it is. I think so. Lower body wise, especially. Man. Tonio got this. Vito is a bit flat. Yeah, he is. Yep. He is. Um, uh, Jaboy150 says Vito is clear for me. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Vito's hands clasp is nasty. Yeah, it's a good shot, man. Really good shot. Uh, Tonio in first, Vito in second as of right now. I agree. Uh, good video winning several poses. Um, yeah. Uh, holy crap, Vito impressed like crazy. What a battle. Yeah, it was a really good battle, man. Really good. Rear double Vito all day. Tonio for the win. The authority. Hey, what's up? I give it to Vito. I, I give it to Vito, although Burton was polished too. Yeah. Yeah, Tonio was definitely on, man. Definitely on. That midsection looked even smaller than what I saw in the past from Tonio. Let's see. Good Vito blew my mind. I didn't expect him to be that on point. No, I didn't. I didn't either. I was expecting less. For sure. Finals tonight? You know I'll be here for the finals tonight, bro. I will be going live for the finals tonight. You guys will see me then. It'll be around 7 o'clock is, uh, is when we're going to see the finals. I will definitely be here for finals. Uh, let's see. Get a few more comments in. <clears throat> uh, Raphael won the lat spread and abs and thigh, maybe side chest. Vito got front double and most muscular. Tonio got the back poses, maybe side chest, arguable abs and thigh. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Vito has an amazing rear double. He just doesn't know how to pose that well yet from James Mack. Yeah, he needs more practice when it comes to posing, for sure. Once he learns how to pose, he'll continue to be very dangerous. Uh, finals are about to be crazy. Yeah, man, the finals are going to be nuts. Yeah, they are. Uh, fasting, feasting, beasting says, Tonio wins all the poses, except maybe the side chest. Okay, okay. I think the Tonio um, looked good in the side chest for the last call out. Um at the the side tricep, I think Tonio needs to rotate the shoulder back a little bit more. I didn't I didn't love his execution. Um, maybe that was an angle thing. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, I think side tricep you could give even a good veto. Um, they never look as good on stage as on Instagram, or very few do anyway. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Good veto, I think, uh, lived up to a bit of the hype from what he was showing on Instagram, though. Um. Tonio's legs are smooth. If he wins, that's whack. Uh, who said that? Uh, Dab Dabaru? Um, I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't think that his legs looked uh, smooth. Um, were they as separated as good Vito's? No. But I wouldn't say smooth. No way the judges will place Vito ahead of Rafael in Brazil. Boys, it's not happening. It says Connie Alvarez. Maybe not. Maybe not. It could be unlikely. You know, there are an amount of politics that could play a part here. <clears throat> uh, let's see. That midsection for Tonio was better than previous shows. It was. His midsection was tighter, man. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, Vito has one of the best coaches in the game, and you can you can uh, bet uh, he looked better. He'll look better tonight. His poses need improvement uh, to showcase his work. Yeah, and hopefully Chris Aceto will get after him about that. I think he probably will. None of them can beat Nick at New York. <laughs> probably not. You know, I mean, Nick's top three in the world. Uh, Go Fitness says, I have Rafa hands down. That's interesting, dude. That's that's interesting. Once I jump off of here, we're going to have to chat. Because that's, uh, that's very interesting. <clears throat> Looks like looks like there's more people that have Raphael winning. Okay. Okay. To me, he looked like he wasn't quite as on as the Arnold Ohio. 
it looked like Tonio was better conditioned, especially from the back. And uh, I don't think that uh, I don't think that Rafa brought it this show. Uh, Tonio took every pose except maybe the front lat spread. Okay, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. You guys, no matter what happens tonight, this was a fantastic prejudging from the top three here. We really, really had a fantastic showing from uh, from Tonio, from Good Vito. He did live up to the hype. And Raphael has a few hours to make some changes and to see if he can come in a little bit better. Whether or not he can do that in such a short amount of time, I don't know. I think Good Vito could probably fill out a little bit more. But this is going to be a really, really exciting finals, you guys. Really exciting finals. Uh, <laughs> Tonio sabotaged by Raphael before finals burn. Well, it didn't work. That's for sure. It didn't work. Uh, yeah. Look, that's the, that's the prejudging, you guys. So look, we are going to be going live again tonight for the finals. That's going to be at 7 p.m. Atlantic time. So I'll put up another uh, another preview um, so that you guys will see the time coming up. Um, I'll see if I can get some more info between now and then from uh, from what might actually be uh, be happening on the ground. See if uh, see if I can talk to Tonio, things like that. But you guys, thank you very much for being here. If you have not subscribed to the channel as of yet, please do so now. Turn on the notifications so you can you get all the info straight from the source here on all the top bodybuilding coverage in the industry. I do news videos, podcasts with all the top athletes that are out there. You guys, please like and subscribe, and I appreciate all you guys being here. And for the OGs, again, thanks a lot for being here, you guys. Really, really appreciate it. We're going to be back for the finals tonight. Make sure you guys stick with me. I'll see you guys at finals. So, for now, that's it for me here at EP09. We'll see you guys.